Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watch Want. Thanks for logging on. Today, we are looking at a signature reference from a family of watches that is near and dear to my heart. This is the Jejer Le Coult Grand Reverso Ultra Thin, 46.8 millimeters from lug to lug by 27.5 millimeters wide in polished stainless steel. This watch represents a continuity that is at the core of Jejer Le Coult's DNA. Just as Audemars Piguet has its Royal Oak Jumbo, Patek Philippe has its Calatrava, Rolex its Submariner, Omega its Speedmaster Professional, and Breitling its Navitimer, for Jeger Le Coult, the essential, simple reverso really is the company icon. It's the face of the manufacturer, it's the enduring model in a catalog that more than at most watchmakers has seen turnover and variety and eclecticism for the entirety of the manufacturer's history, but the Reverso, since 1931, has been something of a constant. Never lost in the hearts of collectors, its popularity has waxed and waned among the management at JLC, but I'm happy to say that in the year 2015, the Reverso's anchored in the lineup and its strength within the manufacturer has never been greater, nor has its regard among collectors ever been stronger. And on my wrist, you can see the Grand Ultra Thin case actually wears fairly well on a smaller wrist. Now my wrist is six and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference, and you can see that the strength of this watch really is in its compact girth. This is ultra thin, and when I say ultra thin, let me give a sense of proportion and a sense of relative scale. The legendary Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Jumbo, often called an ultra thin in its own right, is still 8.1 millimeters thick. A Patek Philippe Gondolo 5200 of similar shape and Art Deco sensibility is 11 and a quarter millimeters thick, and a Vacheron Constantin Malt Tonneau, simple time only, is 9.25 millimeters thick. So when I say the Reverso Grand Ultra Thin is only 7.25 millimeters thick, I'm giving you a sense of just how compact this watch really is on the wrist. It is incredibly flat, and it sits on the wrist as secure as a limpet. Now, the nice thing about it is there is no compromise in terms of lug-to-lug -lug size. It's really quite compact when you consider that the nominal measurement, the 46.8 millimeters, is from extremity to extremity, so you don't have to worry how it's actually going to wear on the wrist. Almost all watches with a measurement of 41, 42, 43 millimeters are going to be far over 50 millimeters when measured from lug to lug. So even if your wrist is under 6 inches, uh, 15 centimeters in circumference, you're going to be able to wear this watch comfortably, securely, without any overlap. And this is that dead head-on shot. This is from directly overhead. You can see how much wrist I have in reserve on both sides of this lug. So although this is a grand reverso, you can see that it's nowhere near as large as 46.8 millimeters would suggest. Really, you need to think of this as a watch that wears as though it were 38 to 40 millimeters and very comfortable. Now it's on a superb quality black alligator leather strap with a monotone stitch. It's got a little bit of bolster as it approaches the lugs and you can see how nicely it tapers as it moves away from the lugs to conform to a sharply contoured smaller wrist. I also like the way the bolstering is gradiated up and graduated progressively, almost merging seamlessly with the conical style rounded off lugs. Beautiful. And in true Art Deco fashion, it's the details that make the reverse. So you can see these horizontal gadroons cut into the inner case. Remember, the signature of every reverso is the parting point between the cradle and the case, and the gadroons represent the start of that partition. You can see how they are perpendicular to the lengthwise flow of the case, and this is characteristic of the strong linear and geometric forms that grew popular between 1925 and 1940 during the what many would call the heart of the Art Deco era, starting with the Exposition des Arts Décoratifs in Paris in 1925, popularized on ocean liners, later translated to everything from corporate lobbies to skyscrapers. Art Deco was a modernist, mechanically inspired celebration of the machine of mechanical, physical, metallic structure as such, and it's recapitulated in the design of the Reverso, first conceived in 1931. Now, the key to every Reverso is, in fact, that rotating case. And just like the originals from 1931, 
which were designed to shield the crystals of the watch from the blows of polo mallets. That's right, the Reverso was originally a sports watch, but just like those originals, the reverse side of the Grand Reverso Ultra Thin leaves you a broad, metallic, polished face which can remain mysteriously unadorned for onlookers benefit or just like many of the original owners of these watches during the 30s and 40s it can become a platform for personalization JLC offers a factory engraving program whereby you can have anything from a family coat of arms to enameled graphics engraved and installed on the case back and although I like my complicated reversos with the dual dials and additions of secondary functions the ability to have the watch first of all in the image of the true original if you prefer and second of all completely personalized to your taste either as a gift or a personal memento is an advantage that's unique to the reverso because you can wear it blazon topside on your wrist without removing it and looking at the case back and it remains a beguiling way to waste time during boring meetings. I'm going to mention that because it's a standout advantage of every Reverso. Now the action for those who have never held a Reverso in their hand is very crisp. You get a sense that there's real almost rifle bolt type levels of tolerances, engineering, and hand assembly here. There's absolutely no play in the mechanism. When you run your finger along the side, you can feel the ribbing of the gadroons, but there's no sense of the seam between the carriage and the case. There's no play, there's no rattle, there's no apparent partition until you push opposite the crown and you begin the rotation. This is a beautifully made piece, and right down to the overlapping perlage pattern of the carriage, nothing is left rough, raw, or unfinished. JLC covers all of its bases and glorifies its flagship watch. Now I will call to attention some of the features of the dial because it's an Art Deco masterpiece in its own right. Silvered with contrasting guilloche pattern, there's actually a dimpled chapter ring that runs around the extremity of the dial, around the circumference. It's more apparent in our high-res photos on watch you want than it is on the iPhone, but it's there and it's a beautiful segue into the brushed metallic silver hour track featuring distinctive Art Deco 1930s style Arabic numerals of different sizes and then there is a minute track inboard framing a beautiful vertical guilloche pattern that really explodes in the light and you can see how as I move this watch through the light it visibly reflects more than the hour track around it it just lights up and in addition to the textural contrast it creates a chromatic or photo reflective contrast as well almost like the reflector on an automobile or a bicycle at night. It's quite vivid and quite beautiful. There's also a very discreet Jezure Le Coult Marquis at 12 o'clock, and that's a bit of a vintage throwback in its own right, as today we've seen super graphics on watches really elevated to the point of absurdity, and that's probably most evident on Hublot and Rolex references, which have just become billboards for super graphics. I love those watches in their way, but JLC with this traditional Reverso shows how it's done. And on top, beautiful heat blued broadsword hands. Again, in the style of the originals, they're a beautiful 1930s vintage touch. And in person, their gorgeous cobalt tones really add a lot of character to the dial. That small flourish of color that breaks up the otherwise super cool white metal and silver dial composition. Now I'll show you the back of the carriage. It's, there's just not much to see, but it is beautifully straight-grained. You can see there's a brushing pattern that runs vertically, and you can see that, as with all JLC models since 2004, save the caliber 101 micro movement, it is subject to the Master Control 1000 hour regulation. Caliber 822, originally developed in the early 90s specifically for the Reverso line, it's a shaped movement inside, 134 parts, 21 joules, 45 hour power reserve and a nice traditional 3 hertz or 21,600 vibration per hour rate. It is a JLC in-house movement as they all are in the modern reversos and the bottom line is it's no less a masterpiece than what sits on the outside. But that classical proportion of the reverso, that golden ratio that essentially hasn't changed since the 1931 originals, the history of the watch from the original polo players with their mallets to the modern day when this represents something of a high horology icon and the face of one of Switzerland's greatest watchmakers. Again, if you want a definitive model, an unquestioned icon of the house that, in, that conceived it, that executed it, you want something like the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Jumbo, the Rolex Submariner, 
or the Jeger Lecoult Reverso. And this Jeger Lecoult Reverso, the Grand Reverso Ultra Thin in polished stainless steel, is an outstanding example of one of the finest breeds.